You know, this is one of the great ones. Words spoken by Charles Lindbergh to Joe Sutter. They were talking about the Boeing 747. Today, the jumbo jet is such a familiar sight that it's almost impossible to imagine a world without it. But 50 years ago, a plane of that size seemed unimaginable. And it might never have been built if it weren't for one very remarkable man. Joseph F. Sutter was born in Seattle in the shadow of the Boeing factory. As a boy, he would stop along his paper route to watch the new planes fly high overhead. After completing a tour in the Navy during World War II, Sutter worked summers as a Boeing mechanic while earning an aeronautics degree from the University of Washington. After graduation, he began working at Boeing as an aerodynamicist. He became known as a gifted and tenacious troubleshooter, a reputation that gained him a big opportunity. In the summer of 1965, Joe was pulled off the 737 program unexpectedly to head up design studies for a huge new airplane, the 747. The airplane was so different that each component had to be designed from scratch. The new plane would demand the construction of its own factory, and the timetable was so tight that work began long before the factory was finished. The thing about Joe Sutter, he had a feel uh, for things that uh, I had not seen before in an engineer. Joe wasn't just a brilliant aerodynamicist. He could talk to people on the shop floor, senior company executives, uh, engineers in other disciplines, from uh, landing gear to structures. Uh, he really understood airplanes from tip to tail. In addition to the engineering hurdles, Boeing was betting the company on the 747. Tremendous cost of building that airplane it was almost more than the net worth of the Boeing company, and so it was a tremendous risk. And at the center of this storm was one man, Joe Sutter, a no-nonsense problem solver, charting a steady course for his new plane. He had super high integrity, he was courageous as hell, and he was a guy that had true grit. I mean, he wasn't afraid to say what he thought, and he wasn't afraid to challenge it, which is what you want in a leader. If I, you know, and I'm not sure, uh, had we had anyone else leading that program from a design standpoint, would we have gotten it done? He made the job probably the easiest of, of any I've ever been on, and it was the biggest. Sutter's vision was to create a new kind of plane, a wide body with two aisles to accommodate more passengers than any aircraft before. And anticipating how lucrative the freighter market would be, he designed the plane to handle standard size containers with easy loading through the hinged nose. One of the big air freight carrier guys, we had him come up and uh, take a look at it when it was in the hangar. He stood up in the cockpit and looked back, and he says, I'll never be able to buy one of these. I could never get, get that much cargo to make it pay. He ended up with five of them. The 747, soon dubbed the Queen of the Skies, was born. What really amazes me, they launched in March 1966. It flew in February of 1969 and delivered <laughs> in January, I think it was January of 1970. We haven't gotten any better than that. What an amazing feat by an amazing group of people led by Joe. And uh, that's why they called him the Incredibles. I guess this sound completion or something, that, that thing is just ridiculously easy to fly. It's just a pilot dream. It was a great sight. I mean, it was an impressive airplane. It... Joe Sutter's 747 became the backbone of modern air travel. To date, more than 1,400 have been built, and there are orders for hundreds more. You know, it's been a passenger, it's freighter, it's Air Force One, it's carried the shuttle. 
and all built off of that original design. More than 40 years later, Joe's legacy lives on. He's lent his masterful vision to many of these updates and served both the government and private sector with a wisdom and perspective that only he has as the father of the 747.